everybody. It's good to see you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You're so nice, Brandy. Good to see you. How are you doing? Yes, at the back as well? Oh, good? Yeah? They can't hear me? No? Uh-oh. Um, <laughs> uh, we are in a beautiful series. That's not... Oh, yeah. That's the name of the series. So if you haven't been with us, maybe, for the past few weeks, you can actually um, listen to all of our sermons on YouTube. So we encourage you to do that. But today, uh, we're going to again talk about eternity and heaven. And this is exciting, isn't it? It is. Uh, in our home, uh, for the past few weeks, it's been a very hot topic. Our kids uh, kept talking about it. The older daughter uh, kept asking, what are we going to eat in heaven? Because that's the most important thing she's interested in. And the younger one keeps asking me to promise her that I will never go to heaven because she doesn't want to stay here without her mommy. So I had to promise her, I will never go to heaven. And she goes, but never? I'm like, never. <laughs> but I hope Jesus forgives me. But <laughs> she's very sweet. <laughs> and um, I'm really glad we're talking about this, about this series, because uh, my whole life I had goosebumps when I was thinking about eternity. Especially as a kid, you know? I uh, was raised in a Christian family and uh, we went to church that had pretty small building. So um, they divided the kids into groups and some kids had uh, their program during worship and some of them had program during uh, the sermon. And I was lucky one to have program during worship. So I could listen to all the sermons that I didn't understand at all. God only knows what was happening in my head. Um, and, uh, you know, um, our pastor, he was very radical as well. So he, for example, he would say that we have to die for the things of this world, like the TV, you know, because it was time, long time ago, and we watched TV. So I was sure that we're going to go home and my parents will die in front of the TV, basically. <laughs> so I was scared. <laughs> And then he talked about eternity and about end times and stuff like this. So when I was older and I would go home after school uh, and um, there would be no one in the apartment, uh, I would turn on the TV again just to have something talking to me so I don't feel alone, you know. It's just the easiest way to do that. So I would turn on the TV and I would watch the only thing there was on Polish TV back then. It was government deliberations. It was agribusiness information, and then it was an episode of never-ending TV Polish series soap opera. It was a bad one, okay? It's still on <laughs> after all these years, like 25 years. But yeah, it's still on. And, uh, you know, at the end of this uh, episode, uh, I was getting a little bit, you know, <clears throat> nervous if no one came back home, okay? So if the episode was ending and I was still by myself, I would be like looking through the window if people are still there because I wasn't sure if I didn't miss a rapture, okay? So this is being raised in a Christian family, <laughs> thinking about eternity. Oh my God, <laughs> are they gone? Am I only one who's, who's left? <sighs> and then, just to, you know, sum it up, we had this play at, in church. It was called Heaven's Gates and Hell's Flames. Okay? It was a scary play. It uh, showed um, many different people with lo lots of different stories that ended with their uh, more on, or less un unexpected death. And then there were a group of angels and they were just pointing, you go to hell, you go to heaven. And it was scary, you know? And after watching that, I would do anything not to go to hell. But the vision of heaven wasn't very optimistic or appealing as well. It, was, it, it wasn't very encouraging. And as a church, unfortunately, we do the same. We've been doing the same for years. We've been scaring people with hell to encourage them to go to heaven, to live with God. That, that was our... Um, our way to convince them, we would scare them, look, hell is so bad, you don't want to go there. 
go to heaven, it's better, but you don't want to go to hell. We would speak loudly about what we are against and we forgot to tell people what we are for. And heaven is a beautiful place. We've been listening mm, to a beautiful word about it last week, so if you missed it, you can still listen to that. But heaven is something we can look forward to and we should look forward to. And because of this scaring people with hell, we as Christians became afraid of death as well, somehow. But we shouldn't be afraid, we should be excited. Yeah. Because this is when we're gonna be with our God, our creator, our savior, right? Amen? Anyone excited? Woo! Woo! That's good. So after some time, after scaring people with hell a little bit, we decided maybe it's actually not the good tactics because, you know, it's a little bit weird and scary to talk about eternity. If you think about something that doesn't end, it's just scary. So we just skipped this part. And we started telling people that if you live with God, you'll, be, uh, you'll have always someone with you. God will always be with you in every circumstance. We would talk um, to them about um, healing, that he died for our sins. He died also for our healing. He died to set us free. We can be free in this life. We will always have someone who will be with us. And it's all true because Jesus came to do that. He is the healer. He, he sets us free. He is with us in every single situation. But that's not the whole story. There's more. There's eternity that we have with him in heaven. And sometimes we think that if we share with people, you know, only this part on earth, you know, we tell them what's happening here on earth and we forget about the eternity, they will be even more interested. But the th true thing is that we are skipping the most important part, the most inconvenient part, if we don't talk about eternity, but it's also very important because Probably you know this verse, or even if you don't, maybe you've heard of it a little bit of it some, somewhere. But the Bible says, in a very famous verse, that, that God sent his one and only son. So everyone who believes in him can have eternal life, right? Yeah. Everyone say eternal. Eternal. Yeah. And this is really important. He didn't just come to give us a life. He came to give us eternal life. And eternity is what gives our life meaning. And uh, in our family right now is a season of birthdays. So uh, today my oldest daughter has a birthday. It's her sixth birthday. So it's very serious. Uh, it's lots of fun, but uh, soon I will have a birthday, and that's not that fun. <laughs> Getting a little bit older. But um, when you have birthday on uh, so-called in Poland, Day of the Dead, because this is when my birthday is, you think about the meaning of your life twice as much as a regular person, okay? Because it's a special atmosphere, <laughs> you know, on the 1st of November. But all of us, at some point in our life, we think about the meaning of our life. We think, why are we here? What are we here for? What will, you know, people remember about me when I'm gone? And stuff like this. It might sound a little bit dark, but all of us can admit that sometimes we think about it. Okay? I do. You don't? I hope you do. <laughs> And, you know, in the Bible, uh, there are lots of, lots of great uh, passages about our eternity. But right now, I would like to go to uh, Jacob, or James, is it in English? James, sorry. It's James. And uh, chapter 4 and verse 13. And it says, now listen, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why? And you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? That's a good question. 
You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. And I know this verse is not very, this passage is not very popular right now. <laughs> what is your life? It's just a mist, you know? Something like this. That's a mist. But the truth is, this verse doesn't say that our life is not important, is not significant, but it says it's just fleeting. Yeah. It's here today, but it's not here. It can not be here tomorrow. And you know, we think we have control over our life, but we don't. The only person that has control over our life is God. And it's a good thing because I prefer to have my life in his hands than in my own. Yeah. It's so much better. But some of us think, oh, you know, I have my life planned and this is going to happen first and then I'm going to do that. You know, I'm immortal, basically. You know, I have a plan to leave a great legacy in here. But the Bible says, that's your life. It's a little bit scary, but it's funny as well. <laughs> we, we think that, you know, oh, I pray every day. I read the Bible. I only listen to worship songs every single day. But the Bible says, that's your life. It doesn't matter what we do. God is still in control. And, um, and, it's a good, and it's a good thing, but we have a choice. What we do with the mist that has been given to us. And we can spend our life, our time here on earth, complaining. We can spend it on bitterness, on unforgiveness. Or we can spend it building comfortable life, okay? To have everything we need. Or we can spend it and decide that every single moment of our life will bring glory to the one who is worthy, to our God. And to make sure that all other people can find out more about him, can meet him. And this should be goal of our life. And uh, we, in these times, it's kind of weird, but we started to think a lot about ourselves. We go so much deep in ourselves as Magda said before we think me myself and I okay it's important for me to feel good about it it's important for me to to feel comfortable as well you know and we look so much into ourselves and also stuff that are around us here on earth that we we forget where we are going and the only time that we should really go deeply into ourselves is to make sure that we're becoming more like Christ. And, uh, you know, if we want our life here on earth to have meaning, we have to be driven by something greater than us, than only me, myself, and I. Okay? And God, who created us, created our life, He gave us this mist. He's got the power to use us in a great way, but we have to say yes, okay? And um, we are called to do what Jesus called us to do. He called us to go to whole earth and make disciples, to tell people about him, about his love, about his sacrifice. And we do it more or less, but if we do it, we can't forget about eternity. Because if we do so, if we forget to tell people that there is something more than th this life here on earth, there is more than just me, myself, and I, then it's just pointless, you know? And very often, um, we are scared of mentioning eternity right now because it's not very cool. Right now, the topics that are cool are like self-development, being a better person, and a healthy lifestyle. And thank God, all of that is part of Christianity. So if you tell people that, you know, if you live with God, you're gonna be healthier, you're gonna have um, time to self develop, you're gonna uh, be a better person as well, it's all true. 
because it should be part of our Christianity. We should be better people if we are with God. We should um, experience his healing because he's the healer. We should self-develop because you can't stay the same if you meet God. But it's not the whole story. There is more than that. There is also our eternal life that is awaiting. And we can't forget to tell people about it. Because if we do, if everything we offer people is that their life here on earth will be a little bit better if they in it with God, then all of our sacrifice, all of our time then that we invest to share gospel with people, all of our church activities, all of our serving, generosity, it doesn't make sense. It's not worth it if it's all about making other people's lives a little bit better here on earth. It only makes sense if it's about their eternity. If it makes their life here on earth better, but also they have eternity with God. And that's the main point that we should have in our mind. There are lots of companies right now around us that are um, here to make your life a little bit better. You know, and if you have a need, they try to fulfill this need. If you don't have a need, they create the need so they can fulfill the need so you can pay your money. But we are not that. We are not one of these companies. We are his church. And we are here to share with people the true good news. That is that he came here so we can have life to the full, but he came here to give us to give us eternal life as well. And it's really, really important to not forget about it because when Jesus came to earth and when he went on the cross, he didn't want just, you know, he came just to heal a few people, deliver some people from demons and set some people free, help this person, help that person. He did that as well. And it was amazing and he's still doing that right now, all of his miracles. But his main goal was to give us eternal life. And we can't forget about it and we should be like Jesus, more like Jesus, you know? And sometimes if we, when we do something in our life, we calculate if it's worth doing this thing or not. If it is, we do it. If it's not, we don't. What's the point of doing something that's like, you know, not giving you any profit and if we look at our Christian life, all of the sacrifice, all of the time that we invest, all of the mm, generosity and everything we do for God, but we forget about eternity, we forget that we do it with the perspective of, of eternity in mind, then it doesn't make any sense. Because if it was only about making other people's lives a little bit better, it would make any sense, you know? It's not worth it. It doesn't make sense to be different than anyone in school, than anyone at work. It doesn't make sense to serve if I can watch Netflix all day. It doesn't, doesn't make sense to be generous when I can go shopping. It doesn't make sense only if we have a perspective of eternity in our mind and in our hearts, it makes sense. And God is the one who put eternity in our hearts as we heard at the first sermon in this series. He, it's already there. We just have to remind ourselves we are call, called for eternity. Because how many of you know that you can't share with someone else something you don't have or something you don't know you have? We have to be reminded that we are not here for this life, but we are here for the eternal life. Yeah. We are here just passing by, and heaven is our home, yeah. as Paul says. And, um, you know, even if doing everything we do here on earth for God, we will get no profit, no blessing for that, it's still worth it. Yeah. But we will, because God is good. You know, he's a great father. He cares for us. He gives us everything we need. And we have so many things to be grateful for. He will bless us. But, but the ultimate blessing we can get from him 
is eternal life with him and you know the bible says that one day spent with god in his courts is better than a thousand anywhere else and one of the translations the message translation says about this verse in psalm 84 it's verse 10 it says one day spent in your house this beautiful place of worship beats thousands spent on Greek island beaches. Who loves the beach? <laughs> Yay. Yay! I love it. When I hear the waves and I see the sea, I'm resting immediately. Okay, it's beautiful. I've been to Greece uh, and it's beautiful as well. So the Bible knows what the Bible is talking about, okay? It's not just random place, it's really beautiful. And I spent there only a few days, but I could easily do a thousand. <laughs> but the Bible says that one day with our God is so much better, so much sweeter than a thousand spent without him anywhere else. But God didn't promise us just one day. He promised us eternity. We can spend every single day of our life forever with him. And this is the greatest promise and the greatest blessing that we got from him. And there's a person who was really uh, living that perspective throughout his life. And his name is Paul. If you don't know Paul from the Bible, then you've probably been to some funeral or maybe you saw some cemetery. You can sometimes read some quotes from the Bible. It's probably his words. Okay. He talked a lot about eternity, about heaven. Because, because he knew that he's got eternal life with his God face to face. And he was actually going in that direction. He was waiting for it. And he said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race and I have remained faithful. That's one of the things you can read on the graves. But Paul had a really tough life. You know, and saying that words, it sounds like someone who is actually happy with his life, okay? I fought a good fight and everything. It sounds good, but he had really tough life. He was in prison, his ship crashed, he was uh, poor, starving, he was in, um, huh? He was, yeah, he was sold and uh, he was, um, yeah, he had lots of bad experience in his life, but in the next verse, after the one we just read, it says that now the prize awaits me, the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on the day of his return. And the prize is not just for me, but for all who eagerly look forward to his appearing. Paul had eternal goal. He didn't do all these hard things in his life because he wanted, you know, just to make a great sacrifice for nothing. But he knew where he was going. And he knew that he will get this prize that he's talking about. And he was eagerly looking forward to Jesus appearing. Are we looking forward to that? Are we looking forward to that? In Philippians, he says, in chapter 3, verse 7, he says, I once uh, thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage so that I could gain Christ and become one with him. And then it says a little bit later, I focus on, on this one thing. Forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. And this is one of my favorite Bible verses. Forgetting the past and looking forward to what is ahead. To the prize that I have in heaven. And Paul had this perspective throughout his whole life. And that's the only reason he was able to say that to die is gain. Okay? This is his famous words as well. 
not very popular as well. <laughs> but if you have eternal perspective, and you know that the moment you die is actually the beginning of your eternal life, it sounds pretty good, okay? And he was excited about it throughout his whole life. And he knew, and he said that in the Bible as well, that heaven is our home. And does this mean that we should copy what he did? We should leave everything, we should just travel the world and preach the gospel? Maybe for some of you, it will mean exactly that. I don't know. But I believe that we should take his example and actually copy his beautiful attitude that he had. The Bible says that he was happy when he was poor and when he had enough because his happiness was in being close to God, was in Jesus, not in what he had, not in his comfortable life, but in Jesus. And he knew where he was going. He kept the end in mind. And, um, and I would like to encourage you today to live this week thinking about eternity. Not forgetting that there is eternity awaiting on us. And I would like to encourage you to do so because if you have eternity in mind in whatever you do, then serving others is so much easier. It just makes sense. It's so much easier to be generous. It's so much easier to help other people. It's so much easier to invest our time in other people. It's so much easier to love God, love people and change our world if we have perspective of eternity.